Hello and uh, welcome everyone. In this webinar, we are going to talk about SAS, uh, which is a preprocessor for styling your website. Okay, so in this video, we, we are going to talk about how SAS is helping us in different ways and what is the optimal way of writing SAS without, I mean, avoiding too much nesting and all these things so that we will not be get into a trouble by writing uh, too much nested says so there are some common principles or common rules which we can follow while writing says so uh, what says is and how it is getting compiled says is actually you are writing dot css file and you have to compile it into dot css file because browser does not understand it and says is just a wrapper what it enables you to it enables you to write functions custom utilities and all so that you can avoid doing a repetitions you can create custom themes themes in your application and uh, i mean it is helping in all different areas you can create a placeholders you can create a custom global styles which is available everywhere you can create a placeholders you can create variables you can create functions and you can extend and include those features in different parts of your application okay so just for the definition says is not backing down the man putting smack down and all let's so says is a css preprocessor a layer between the style sheet you author and the css files which are going to be sent to the browser so we are writing dots scss file says file and it is compiled to the css file which are actually being sent to the file so why says so you see why when we wanted to change a color or when you wanted to change a theme we have to change that hex code or rgb code everywhere in the application right we have to find and replace at multiple places so it's a maintenance is increased instead of that what do you think we create a variables and that variables is propagated everywhere so when you change a single color or a theme the whole website look and feel gets changed so like theme is like your background color your font color your font size all these things you can centralize in, in form of variables. Variables are not new in CSS3 also we used to create a dash dash variables but in CES it's at another level you can define everything as a variables and you can include it at different places something like this. You define the brand color and now this brand color can be used anywhere you just put it in a separate file import it at different locations so brand color is this hex code now if you change it hex code it will change the background color of this new bar and the color of this anchor button so we'll just try to uh, combine all the building blocks of SAS uh, from different locations and we will try to include them okay so one more one important thing is while writing says you should have a well-defined structure for your application so that when you are writing says you put all the variables together you put all the global styles together you put all your base styles together core styles together those are nothing but some common standard view of uh, structuring the SAS. So you can extend them individually, you can create a mixins, you can create placeholders variables. Something like this you define, uh, you created a mixins default type. Okay. Now you are including it. So mixins are nothing but just a common utility functions. It's you can consider it's like a common reusable block you have created. Now I can include it anywhere I want. I want header should also extend the same style so i will include default type in header and footer margin bottom 20 font size this and line height 1.5 right so what you can do is you can create a mix in the global sas folder and then you can you can define all the mixins of your applications there uh, like we will be writing some mixins like media query mixins or uh, some padding margin box sizing all the font deciding the font size based on the font weight and pixels all these things so we don't have to change anything while writing says I mean we, we are writing just a dot scss file and we are our compiler which is a node says is working in background to compile it back to css file okay so first of all the variables variables are the way to store the information how we define it using these so you can define phone family phone weight phone size all these things in a variables so if you just talk about simple variables you can define the branding or you can define the the responsiveness media queries breakpoint like okay small will be 480 pixels uh, extra small will be 566 medium will be 736 pixels so media query breakpoint and you can define your brand color styles okay brand blue brand by brand brand red brand yellow so there are a lot of things to define in this and how you include it in the same way 
using dollar you'll just import it and when the when it gets compiled it will look something like this okay so we will be using the semantics so uh, you just not put red yellow because these are already a defined colors right so try to make them as a brand so this is the better way of defining the semantics variable naming just take care of the uh, adopt useful conventions so we can just use a uh, conventions like base colors these are the base colors okay brand colors just define those color name with the brand dash okay and uh, then you if you wanted to customize the brand color with something else then use the base brand color and then customize it so here it is just doing the variations on your on top of your brand color so you don't need to define any new color scheme for it okay next thing says in says uh, when we write it uh, says is helping you to nest the css so in in general css what we used to write it uh, i will just write something in the bottom so you will ally and protect this is how we used to write now with the help of says you can just say okay inside your ally and inside i have anchor tag and i wanted to style it okay so it is able to create a nesting around you right but we need to take care of a lot of things while creating this nesting because this says is again going to get compiled into css only okay and then if you do a too much nesting so if you just do a, some class x then how this final CSS will look like. Right, this is the final compiled CSS you are going to get. So you should take care of this nesting, which we are going to write. Right, so simple like name ul li. Right, so this is a says you have written, but the final says final says what you are going to get. So it's it is fine that we have a three level of nesting, but not more than that. So name ul. This is fine, two level nesting. Nave UL has an ally, so Nave ally. And then Nave has an anchor tag, right? So this is a two level nesting and it looks fine. We are not putting anchor tag inside ally and all these things. We are just maintaining a two level of nesting and everything is covered inside this Nave, Nave bar. So all these styles are applied only to this Nave tag. Okay, too much nesting can lead us to this problem. Okay, you have a body, div container, content, article, then post, title, and then you are putting styles. So do you see the output of this? This will not look good. It will create a lot of mess. You can see div, div, content, container. So finally we are getting CSS only and that is being, that is going to be read by the browser. We are just getting the advantage. Okay, we are writing a good structure. No, this is not at all a good structure. And we are making this hard. Or browser to read this kind of style and it's not even readable for the humans okay what is this right so we just need to take care of writing the nesting maximum two level in worst case three levels sometimes okay not more than that okay you can create a parcel uh, says files for the global okay like you can create a variable so there are different standard views of doing it so you can create a utility colors figures buttons typography reset all these variables you can put so in in our application also we try to create something like this so here i put all the variables in the application placeholders i just did a custom implementation of this h1 h2 tags okay mixins i put some mixins global mixins which we can use like clear fix for just i am using the same common set of forms everywhere so i can use a forms.scss for buttons also I'm using some common set of colors brand colors like this is for buttons so here I have a different buttons but different state so this is a different state accent button flat similarly you can add your own styling okay I want a button which is primary button error button okay if you wanted to have some kind of a uh, success button so you will use button these these classes button and you will put a success class inside it this is how it look like your class name will be success type will be reset so this particular style shall be applied here you just play around with these colors and you can make the new branding so it is extending the base button class and on top of it you are changing the background color border and uh, the font size font family of the text on the button okay you create the partials okay so just try to 
we, we are not going to have a multiple CSS. Obviously, we'll be having only one CSS and we'll be importing all these partials into a single file. Okay, something like this. We are going to import all these things together like partial reset, typography, button figures, grids, color picker and all. These can be a third party. These are your partials and these are your, this is your base. Okay, so every CSS uh, project has all these things where you have to import all these things together. Uh, Mixins, one of the important feature of uh, the CES where you can create a reusable piece of code like border radius and here in the box I'm using that border radius so I can you can use include to access that mixins so this mixins you have defined now I wanted to use it here so I just include border radius 10 pixel so simple mixins example we can see like I wanted to define some kind of a media query so here are I'm just writing, let's create a separate file. Okay, so obviously I will import a few things like, uh, okay, consider that I'm writing machines here. So how you write machines? You just create a machines and this is the mission name, right? So mission name is like I'm creating a media query. Okay, and media queries takes minimum and uh, maximum, right? So here is a minimum argument initialized with null. Now in this function you can decide what you want to do is like based on the min max you have received. So you can write even conditional arguments also which is the beauty of says like if dollar min is defined if you are passing dollar min or you are also passing dollar max. It means you have defined the both min and max boundary for the media query. And here you can write your media query, media only screen. So we can just use and min width and max width, which we define for the media query. This is how we can apply it. and we have the max width also which will be same as this okay this look cool right so if you have min max both if you don't have a both then just add the details and here you can just say media only So we are just covering only min width okay so we have outer if you haven't defined max then do this if you haven't defined a min also if you have if you haven't defined min also then we have only max so we just write the else part of it <coughs> so if you are only defining only max then max width so this is the media query we have created now how can i use this media query somewhere else so <coughs> Consider I'm, I'm writing one custom placeholder. Okay, so how can I use it? Uh, simple statement. So you can include the media. So it is in the different file and you have to import it. I'm passing min width null and just I'm passing maximum width only. So it will come to the else block. This max is the argument. So it will apply only max width media query. And in the when your screen width is same as the medium then it will apply this font size and line height for your custom placeholder so it can be just a class also okay so this is how you can create a mixins other other type of we can create a n number of mixins like different functions you can create a mixin for the box sizing here i will put box sizing which is a bordered box and content box Okay, here you can just specify we have kit box sizing it is also same as sizing with the argument which you are going to pass or similarly box sizing here you can also put a uh, For Mozilla, Moze. Okay. Mixins or other mixins you can simply create is the 
for the ULLI clear list where you wanted to simply create a ULLI with the list style type none ULLI list okay so what I'm doing is I have a UL here I will include padding margin so I can because I, what I want is I want a margin padding as none so I can create a, another mixing and include it here only so this is margin padding so in the UL I will include so this is this is how you will include the mixing padding margin not a function and for the ally which will be inside UL we are maintaining a listing here and we have to include this can be another list where either you can put a list style type none or we can also create a small mixings for it which you can use anywhere so I can say list style right so this is cool you can extend it and mixings are very important feature I wrote a media query so that media query can be used in your any of your class using just include syntax okay so this media query is just deciding the border radius and we just need that these prefix for different browsers uh, Safari, Mozilla and uh, Internet Explorer Edge and the latest versions we just need to provide a radius so rules mixins without argument spells I mean uh, in all the all the mixins in most of the mixins we should try to have the argument so based on the argument we can decide what we are going to do okay uh, similarly these I make we can also extend something okay so you created a class so in says mixins can be included and simple classes can be extended okay so I created only simple placeholder message now I wanted to extend these features just by changing overriding the color so initial color will be the gray or CCCC extend you can success it can be green red and yellow right so what we did is we are extending this message class everywhere so this is clear right this is cool feature we defined a class once and now you can keep extending and override the styles you wanted to do okay overuse of extends directive may create a lot of ugly selectors I mean obviously we will not be using extend we will be just using extend only for the based on the usage is there a particular use case or not placeholders unlike mixins placeholders can be used multiple times without adding any duplicate code so I, I in my code also I created a placeholder and what I want in the placeholders is I don't want it to create a duplicate classes like h1 h2 h3 are already there but I wanted to write my custom implementation so I just put a percentage h2 right so this is how we can create a placeholders can be used in multiple times without adding any duplicate code and much friendlier right so BZ image, background image is this and now you can extend this and just overwrite it. Okay, this BZ image can be used multiple times. Background image is already a class, consider that. I want to, now I don't want it to put a new name. So just percentage BZ image. Okay, so you may not extend an outer placeholder or an outer selector within the media queries. So that is true. So how we do it, I mean, there is always a way to deal with the media queries so you should first define the tag and then inside it just include the media queries something like this okay I mean it's just an approach you can do it that 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 way only but if if I'm using a particular class something like this okay I have a UL and I, I just define a basic uh, basic styling so in that itself I have to define this media query it should not you can define all the different media queries you have dpx medium all the breakpoints we have so this is just a, the right way to include the media query for a particular tag so the UL definitions will ch keep changing based on the dimension okay here it's obviously not a correct one so it will be applied when this is the medium, x medium or x small. So when the small screen minimum is null. So till small, till medium and till extra medium. These types will be applied. 
okay functions you can write functions like this calculate width calculate height span 3 I mean if I wanted to define the font weight or font size like here it is calculating width based on the number of columns we are passing so this is what we can do is we can define that okay other than that like uh, we just talked about the functions so these functions can be defined in our says okay based on the text use source map with says basic things okay let's let's go into the code and let's explore more so these are the missions we have created this is the global says you might have seen this everywhere so this will be applied everywhere the margin zero phone family box sizing bordered box phone size okay an SQL body is having height 100% margin 0 so these are some of the global which you always wanted to have in your applications the body will have height width 100% line height 6 okay then this is rest is your global style okay your body will have a column layout and display flags inside body container you say that okay it will grow something like this and you have page container which is having maximum width so all the common outer skeleton you can define in the global rest like buttons we talked about it all different kind of buttons we just you can create a variations in button just by putting classes like this button success button error button flag so you will have a three different variations of a common base styles but by just changing the background color border color and all okay so even you can take care of the typography where you just define the font size the headers links tables how the tables will look like in the overall in the application how what all fonts we are including font url okay and then include all of these together typography con considers the the phone sizing uh, the phone families you are using font weight all these things for the html forms uh, i wanted to use this common style for all different kind of text area input type text so if your tag is this input type button text area or select i will be applying all these common styles and whenever you do hover so in if you wanted to these are the pseudo selectors right when you mouse over or mouse active or mouse visited then these classes can be used so when you hover it it will get a border when you focus it it will get a border so everywhere we use this like uh, on the button or an, uh, on the anchor tag on the button there are many right focus active hover disabled right so when you focus on the button this will be the behavior so you can just write at the rate and dot so you can i mean this vs code is very friendly and it will tell you what you are writing so if you just see so you can see here we are actually cascading ul ally right if you just try to create a class around it so what it is saying is you are creating some element is there inside a ul where you have a class what it is saying it is having ul is having a class hello right if you wanted to have a pseudo selectors like I have anchor tag so these are called pseudo selectors when this element is in focus element is in active so you can write it here all. okay and I mean all the basic uh, type of CSS selectors we can define we can define all of them so it will say okay inside this element I have focus class if you wanted to use ID also we don't use ID for the styling the component so inside that uh, anchor tag we have ID and this is a specificity rule okay applied on it okay so this is all about uh, defining the says you can just define a common variables and use it everywhere and create a one common says base where you, you where you import everything button forms type core mixins variables normalize and now this can be imported in the root of your project so that you are just going to get only single file not multiple files for this because you are combining all of them importing into a single file uh, thanks everyone. I hope uh, now you got the structure and now you know the basic principles more when to use for too much nesting just write more mixins and write media queries inside a element itself not outside the element and uh, how you can write a reusable functions reusable uh, functions which you can extend it mixins which you can include it and uh, all these things. Thanks everyone.